<laughs> I know you've made some of these mistakes and I admit that I've made them too. Some of them are silly, others are embarrassing and some of them are just naive. Here are seven mistakes that bike commuters make at some point. The first mistake is being unprepared. Every time I think to myself that it is okay not to have everything prepared the night before because I'm going to remember to get everything ready the following morning, it's almost guaranteed that something is going to get left behind. In the best case scenario, it's something small like a water bottle or maybe some food. But in worst case scenario, you can end up with a nicely ironed shirt and a pair of cycling shorts to wear. You have to prepare your stuff the night before. Pushing the last mile if you have no shower facilities. Now cycling and sweating go hand in hand together. You cycle, you sweat. And the more intensely you cycle, the faster you push it, the more you push it, the more you're going to sweat. And the funny thing about sweating is that it really kicks in after you stop pedaling. You can feel that when you get to a red light, you stop and after a few seconds you feel that your body temperature, temperature starts to rise and you start sweating. So if you push the last mile, you may end up sweating like crazy for 10-15 minutes after getting to the office, thinking that it's all or nothing. Now cycling is great, don't get me wrong, I'm a big advocate of cycling, but it can be quite tolling on your body if you commute on a daily basis. And we cannot deny this, especially if your commute is longer than six or seven miles each way. Some of us have the fitness level to do it, but when you start out, you may feel like you've hit a brick wall after just a few days. So don't feel that you have an obligation to ride your bike every single day. You can build up your fitness level over time. It may take a few weeks, and you may start out with one day a week, but eventually you will get there and you will be able to ride every single time you want to get to the office. Underestimating how long it's going to take. When you first start out, your guess is going to be way off. Before I started out, I thought I'd be able to do my 10 mile commute in less than 30 minutes. Boy, was I wrong, since I had no idea what the most efficient way to the office was and my fitness level wasn't really great. It took me an hour and 20 minutes to get there the very first day. It was a disaster. Now, this has come down to 45 to 50 minutes, but it's still far away from the 30 minutes that I thought would be possible. Now, doing a test ride on a weekend day gives you a good baseline, and you can always optimize your way and change your route to make it more efficient. By far the biggest mistake you can make is not hitting the like button on this video. I'd like this video to reach as many people as possible so they can have a good bike commuting experience, forgetting to take your bike lock. This has already happened to me on two occasions. I got to the office and I wanted to lock up my bike when I realized that I had left my bike chain at home. So I had to get permission to take the bike into the building with me. I learned my lesson and now I usually keep my bike lock my bike chain wrapped around the bike frame and not in my backpack or my pannier because I change those quite often. Thinking that an expensive bike is way faster. Now, the most important factor when it comes to speed is your fitness level and an efficient route. A fit and strong rider is going to be way faster on a crappy bike than a mediocre rider on a super bike. Your fitness level improves slowly over time, but you can always experiment with new routes. And sometimes a shortcut can mean saving a few minutes of your running time. There are so many options available for cyclists that you don't know about as long as you are not giving it a shot. Not having decent tires. Now this can lead to so much frustration and so much wasted time on the roadside. I got my first puncture on this commuter the very first day I got it because the tires that it came with had no protection at all against punctures. There are so many good options out there when it comes to puncture proof tires. I actually bought a bunch of them and I made a big round of comparison of six of the most popular commuter tires in this video here. So if you are a new commuter and you felt the frustration of having to deal with flats constantly, then go and check it out. And until the next one, pedal on. 
Take care. Bye-bye.